school. Uh, I was a gigantic. Um, is it okay to say uh, vagina? Is that okay? <laughs> is that okay? Is that okay? I got asked a follow. That's a t that's a scientific term. Right? They, they use that in, in the labs. They're experimenting with that different. Uh, <laughs> cures. I don't. I was a I was a, a giant V. And, uh, I still have my my. People growing, growing up with me, my, my aunts and uncles and cousins, like, how's the music? Every year at Christmas, how's the music? I moved to Hollywood to try to make, how's the music? What's up with the band? What are you guys playing? And meanwhile, I'm, tw I'm a grown man. I'm 22, 23, 24. I started doing karate at 22. Oh, you're doing karate. No, it's, you know, they never really thought of me as uh, a martial artist. Though. But when I, when I, I came back from Abu Dhabi and my mom said, she knew I went to Brazil for uh, some kind of karate tournament. She really didn't know what it was. She goes, how did you do? I said, she goes, did you win? I said, no, I didn't win. But I did beat Horla Gracie. She goes, oh, it's okay, baby. Next time, baby, next time. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> That's the truth. She said, next time, baby, next time. And, uh, Never really, every, I go back home, I'm 29, 30, 31, grown man. How's the music? What's the latest? Any, anybody interested in your music? I'm okay. And then my uncle go, hey, someone at work said, you're like a martial arts guy, like expert or something? I'm like, because mm, that's what you, I'm like, that's what I've been, that's what I've been doing, but I never talk about it with my family because they know the truth. They know I'm a big pussy. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell them like I'm gonna walk into my uncles and you know the ex gangbangers and stuff like that. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm this. You know, I don't know how it happened. I'm like, how's the music? Oh, the music's fine, but I'm teaching jujitsu now. And like, every now and then, they started it started more phone calls. My cousin would call me. Go, there's this guy I have a, that has a son who does jujitsu. He says he knows you. I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe if. Uh, if he's in the jiu-jitsu community, that small little microscopic little percentage of the population, maybe he knows who I am. But uh, they think I'm a fraud. They're like, how the hell do you know how to fight? You don't know how to fight, you big pussy. <laughs> I don't know how many times I got uh, cornered by someone and they made me cry. Or my, my brother in front of all my friends. I was like, I'm going to kill him one day. I'm going to kill him. He's a blue belt now. <laughs> he's a blue belt now. He's proud though. My brother, my brother is the only one who kind of gets it. He's like, he goes out and wears Ten Planet gear everywhere. You know, he's he's really really proud of Ten Planet. But uh, the rest of my family, they're like, my cousins are like, they think I'm a big pussy. Uh, I'll, I'll stop saying that word. I'm sorry. I mean that in a in a very weak way, like a weak guy. Sorry. Um, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate this. Uh, Sorry about that cancellation last time. I don't know. Any guys, were you guys supposed to be here last time? Any, anybody? And then the whole jail thing? <laughs> uh, they put me in jail. It was a nice one. They fooled me. They tricked me. They were all in this conspiracy together to get this guy in jail. Let's just get him to go. I'm like, I don't want to go. I'm going to stay right here until my next flight. No, you want to, you want a sh sh Listen, man, you want a shower, you want a bed, you want to get some breakfast. Then if you're flying until three o'clock tomorrow morning, you're gonna just sit here in the airport? No, no, you gotta, you trust, trust. You can, they were one by one convincing me to go. I was like, cause I didn't technically have to. If that was a flight, I could've just jumped on the flight and left. But since it was, the flight was the next day, they killed me all day while I could've jumped on these flights. They did it on purpose. And I go, okay, I'll go get that uh, breakfast in bed. You're right, shower, get a shower, get a bed, man, get a bed. Breakfast in a jail cell <laughs> with a steel door. <laughs> Seriously, it was a real jail. Shawshank Redemption style. <laughs> there was already a guy in there in the, the bunk, and we opened this cage. He's like, he's like, he looks up, and I have my clear plastic bag with like a uh, underwear and toothpaste. And I walk in, like, <laughs> 
They closed the door. I didn't say one word to this guy. I just got up in my gun. I go, there ain't gonna be no shower tonight. <laughs> I was just gonna lay there on the rubber mattress, that like rubber outline, and then you put your towel over it, and I just laid there. Three, three o'clock in the morning, they're gonna pick me up at nine in the morning. I gotta sit here for six hours. Boom, six hours. They put me in jail. They tricked me, God, they tricked me, they got me. And it's when you're just sitting there, and this guy was snoring so loud, I thought it was, and you're in like, it's like a cave in there, like these solid walls. I thought the dude next, in the next cell was snoring. So I go, God, that guy's not. And then I realized, I looked down, and it's like, it's bouncing off the walls. And it's this dude. He's right under me. But didn't say one word to him. Didn't say one word. Those six hours, I just laid there. And then when I heard, because it was a jail, like a few miles away from the airport. Once I started hearing those jets, I go, okay, it's about six o'clock right now. The Jets were telling me what time it is. I'm like, three more hours. Three. <laughs> then they opened up the cage at 8 o'clock. Go, get your breakfast and go out. And all these inmates are all like, it's a loaf of bread. Those little jelly packs that you get at Denny's. You guys have Denny's out here? Like a diner, little jelly packs. A loaf of bread and jelly packs. And they had just a gallon of milk with some styrofoam cups. That was breakfast right there. Anyways, I made it. This time, I did a ride, went to the, the UK embassy. I go, I gotta do it, spend thousands of dollars. I'm never, that's, I'm not going to jail ever again. You don't ever wanna go to jail, trust me. <laughs> you don't ever wanna go to jail. That was just six hours, that's all I needed. I just needed one, but six was, okay, I get it. There's no way I could, so I would be one of those guys that killed, that. I'd be on suicide watch if they threw me in jail. Anyways, they made me, jump through all these hoops to, to get this visa, it's, which is like a passport page inside of the passport. It's like picture and all this. It took, it took a, man, it went down the wire. I had to postpone that London seminar, move it to next Saturday. It was right at the wire, boom. Finally made it in. I get to immigration and they pull me to the side. They go, you had problems before? I go, yes, but this is, it's all good now. Look at that, boom. And they're like, hmm, hmm. They detained me. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> no. And they sat, sat me on the side, they went in the back. And either she was gonna come back from the back and say, grab your stuff and let's go this way, or meet me at the, at the little podium where we first started. It, it was either one, either one. So as soon as she's pointed to podium 15, I go, okay, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> There's no way, because we would have been going the other way. Had my pillow with me and everything. I'm like, God, I look so, uh, um, Non-threatening, man. Come on, I got a pillow. <laughs> and they let me through. They, and when it all came down, I couldn't mess with that little, that visa. I'm like, that says UK entry. Bam! How are you going to stop that? But they made me late. Um, but it didn't affect you guys at all. So, anyways. We're gonna